All right, welcome back guys. Riley here from becominganelectrician.com. Continuing on with our roughing in series, we are now gonna be splicing a single gang box. The tools that you need for splicing is you will, I personally like to use these strippers. These are my favorite strippers with the yellow tips. Klein Tools and Greenlee both make them. They're both excellent. Some people like to use their pliers, their linesmen uh, to strip wires. I've always just liked these. They're nice and fast. They have a spring in them, okay? Nice and easy, these are by far my favorite. You can even strip two wires at once with them, okay? Um, and again, you guys can check out my other video about how to strip wire. So you'll need wire strippers. I like to have an impact on me just for the bond wire. You can just use a screwdriver if you want. And then uh, you will also need your pliers for splicing once we are there, okay? Also in your pocket, you will need wire nuts, okay? These are called on the job site, typically we call them morettes. Now, when it comes to residential, these blue ones are typically fine for pretty much most things that you're doing. Um, they do have a rating in a sense of how many wires you can put in them. So typically it's kind of like if you have too many wires, just go to, just get a red one for that particular splice, okay? Uh, again, check out my other video about how to splice wires. It'll show you way more clear. Uh, again, we can't really see too good in the box here, but I'm just gonna break it all down for you in this video, okay? So again, if you guys wanna stay updated with the website, go to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe and you can download my free book for apprentice electricians. Okay, so when it comes to this box, the first thing to do is to kind of separate the wires into their own groups, okay? So whatever wire they come from, we separate them, make it nice and easy. Now, the first thing to do is to bond your wires. So a lot of people, what they do is when they bond their wire, they just put it around the closest bond screw, bond it, and they're good to go. But I usually like to leave just a little bit of slack on that bond wire in case anything happens. And it's just been a best practice that I've done over the years. Also, when it comes to your bond wire, make sure that it's not like crossing over like uh, the white wire. This would be bad. So for example, if you wanted to bond that, that is bad because what's happening is you are bonding over top of the white wire, all right? So what you wanna do is you just want to put every wire in their own situ you know, in their own place. Now you can just bond the wire just like that. But for me personally, I used to always just kind of leave a little loop just like that. And then I'll hit the top bond screw. Okay, that's just how I've always done it. It just leaves a little extra wire in case you ever need it. So with that bonded, um, I'm just going to screw it in. When we are bonding our wires under a screw or a terminal, always put it clockwise because when it tightens, it's going to tighten with the wire. So that is our bond wire. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push it into the left corner of the box and we have our bond wire there. Uh, here is this bond wire. So again, I'm making sure that the wires are not crossing. So I'm gonna take this other bond wire and we're pushing them all into the corner of the box. The whole trick of splicing inside of a box is to hit your corners, okay? When you hit your corners, you will be able to get way more space and organization in your wires. So I'm just gonna cut it just to the length of the other one, the shortest one here. Again, you don't wanna make your wires too short uh, because it makes it harder to work. But when it comes to the bond wire, you actually want to make a nice splice. You can cut it to trim it and that's it, okay? So this is what your splice should look like. Um, a lot of people, they will twist, <laughs> they twist the bond wires all the way back. That's a nightmare for maintenance. If you ever have to remove one of the wires, you just wanna make a nice clean splice just right there. And then um, I usually put these morettes in my right pocket. And usually when I twist them, I usually use both fingers. So it'll be like, it'll be like this. And the reason for that is because when you have tons and tons of boxes, if you always just use your one hand to keep twisting them, you're gonna be twisting so much on your wrist and over the years, right? Electricians can get carpal tunnel. Um, also, it's very raw on your fingers. Like you have to put lotion on your fingers because your fingers just get so rough and raw over time. So usually when it comes to twisting these on, I usually use two hands. And then on the very, very last twist or two, I'll just use my right hand because I'm right-handed, okay? Now you don't push your wires in until you are done. Let's move on to the white wires. So again, the same thing with the white wires. I'm just going to push it down to the left corner. We'll get the white wire, okay? Again, nothing crossing. And when it comes to our white wire, I just kind of put a little angle into it. That way it hits the very top left corner. 
I'm gonna bend it just gently to hit the bottom left corner. And then the bottom one here, what I will do is I usually just kind of just give it a little bend and that folds in nice like so, okay? So again, if you guys can see that. So the white wire, I just put just a gentle bend and then I just kind of bent it into the bottom left corner with the bond wire. And then I get, I'm going to, I usually cut about three to four fingers. About three fingers is usually pretty good. So you can see I have my three fingers just like this, and then I'll just cut that, okay? So you cut it and you make it nice, you, you make them all the same length. And then what we do is we strip them, okay? So with these types of strippers, you can strip too, but you just gotta be careful. It's all about the integrity of the wire. Again, I highly recommend watching that other video regarding uh, how to splice your wires, because if you, if you go to strip your wires and you score it, it can break very, very easily, okay? So I'm just gonna strip these, not too long, but we'll just do one at a time. So there's one. And if you are just working with 14.2, which is typically residential wire, it is very, very easy to splice compared to 12.2 um, in the commercial scene. Most plugs, most lights are all 12.2 in commercial. And if you are struggling with splicing, like if your hand is getting kind of sore, make your, make your copper longer. And usually when we're splicing, we always want to treat things as if they are live, okay? And so what that means is I would use like my pliers to kind of adjust them. And what you want to do is you just want to line up the bases. And so what the base is, is when you strip it off, essentially where the copper begins on the wire. And then I actually splice from the base. And then we just gently pull back, okay? And again, when I'm splicing, it's kind of... You know, you're just kind of molding just gently, okay? So it's kind of just, you're just molding. Again, check out the other video, be way clearer for you to see exactly how I recommend you splice. And then usually when it comes to cutting, again, on your pliers, you have a hole right here. And on this side is your cutting teeth. So what you can do is you can use it as a, um, a guide, right? You can put your wires in here and cut, and that's the perfect length for your uh, wire nut, except the only thing is, if you cut the wrong way, you're gonna cut your splice off rather than cut a nice length. So for example, just gonna put the wire just in here and let's see if you can see that okay. Just like that. So I'll cut and you can see there is the perfect length. And then you might just wanna kind of maybe round it off just a little bit. It allows the wire nut or the barrette to go on easier, okay? So again, when I come to put this on, I usually just twist with both hands, just like you're seeing, like just like this. And I'm telling you, it just really saves your wrist over the years, okay? I was an electrician for about 10 years, and you know, just over time, just like the repetitive motions that you're doing on the job site, and uh, no one teaches you this stuff. So you don't wanna tighten these down too much because what will happen is you will get flex marks, and then that really wrecks the integrity of this uh, wire nut, okay? So this right here, good clean install. No copper is showing, okay? A lot of times people, they have copper still exposed. The whole goal of this is to prevent copper from being exposed. This is a plastic box. So even if the wire does touch the box, it's not that big of a deal because it's not conductive. But if it is a metal box and you have copper exposed, these things really start to apply more. So again, we're not gonna push in our wires yet. We will just leave them as is. Now, this is where it's really important to understand your splice because in this case, we had our bonds. Well, whenever you bring wires into a box, everything gets bonded. Okay, that's like the number one rule for electricians. You bond everything for safety. The next thing is typically, if this is all one circuit, you're just gonna always splice your whites together, which is your neutral, which is actually your ground at the panel. This is a bond. This is not, this right here is not a ground. It is called a bond. Your ground only happens at the panel and that gives you your potential, your 120 volts, okay? So we got the whites out of the way, we got our bonds out of the way, now we're left with three wires. So if you remember, we brought power in, we have power going out to the other plug, and then we have a switch leg. So the switch leg is what we want the switch to switch power onto, which means that the switch leg doesn't get spliced in, it just goes onto our switch. So for example, I have two switches here for you. This is like an old school toggle switch, right? And how a switch works is you put the switch leg and the hot, doesn't matter which way they go, you just put them both on here. And then when this uh, switch goes on and off, that's it. 
right? That's how a switch works. It just breaks power, it continues power. That's what a switch leg is, okay? Um, you can see that this one actually does not have a bond. Okay, this one does not have a bond screw. And technically, your box itself, you can see the, the uh, metal tab right here. So this one's metal, this one down here is plastic, right? There's the actual screw hole. So when you actually screw in the device, such as like this, that is what technically carries on the bond, okay? But you can see these is what's called a Decora switch. These are what newer homes um, typically have, and they do definitely make the home look newer and fresher and more modern. Um, but you can see that right here, we have the two as well. So you just put the power and switch leg on here. So when you turn the switch off and on, it works. But you can notice that uh, these ones, they do have a bond, right? So. We as electricians here in Canada, any company I worked with did not bond their switches and we never got call on that or anything like that because technically it is bonded right through here from the box. But if you want it to be safe in your home, um, you know, that's what the bond screw is there for. Uh, but I just wanted to share that with you. So typically on our plugs, we are always bonding. Okay, again, like I say in the beginning of all my videos, make sure to look at your code rules, your ask your inspector, all those things so that you don't get called and then have to take off all the switches and have to rebond them. Ask before you get into the job and it's going to make your life easier. And now the switch itself does have an up and a down, okay? And so whatever way the, um, the actual wording is, is usually up and down or the terminals are on the right side of the box, okay? So if it's like this, the terminals go on the right side of the box and that is your switch okay now this is where we look at our labeling okay this is all the difference right here remember i told you the one with the line is the power so again just look at the box look how clean it's kind of looking already because we're kind of organized right we have power we know this one is power so what i'll do is this one will come right down into the bottom corner okay so this black wire i am going to push down to the bottom corner and that way when we fold the wire it's just going to fold up and it's going to be nice and clean this one right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of round it over, just kind of like that. And then those, again, just go into the very, very corner. Okay, and so what's gonna happen is when we cut the wires, when we fold them up, it's gonna be super clean. And then this one, I'll show you what we do with that right after, okay? So again, I usually go three fingers. I'll go maybe just a little bit less because I, I need this one as a pigtail. Um, so I will just cut. And your pigtail, I believe by code, has to be, um, you know, a decent length. Okay, so we will just strip this. Again, you wanna have it, the, the longer you strip your wire, the easier it's gonna be to splice, especially in your early years, okay? So we are splicing on this wire right here, this little extra wire, it sh should probably be just a little bit longer, but uh, I don't have any extra wire on me at the moment. And uh, this is just for the tutorial, okay? So. These are power. When, so power comes in, that's what are called is our home run. And when it gets spliced together, this will go onto the switch. So in other words, we've spliced power through, but we also need to add it onto the switch. This one is our switch leg, and that will just go onto the switch once we are in the finishing stage of the job. So let me just quickly splice this. All right, so just like that. And then I'm just going to uh, splice these together. Again, sorry, but just Go check out the other video where I literally show you step by step how to splice and how it should, how it should look. Um, but this is called a pigtail. We're putting on a pigtail. Again, when it comes to cutting, um, again, your pliers have the two sides. If you put it over and you cut, you will get a nice um, size for your moret. But again, just be careful that you are not cutting this way because you will cut off your splice, okay? You wanna, you wanna go over that way. And I'll just put the moret on. Again, my pigtail should have been longer, but everything will be okay. So now this box has been spliced. We have to make sure that we are going to be pushing in our wires into this box nicely so that when the drywaller comes, it looks nice and clean, okay? Because otherwise they're gonna hit your wire. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna push in that bond wire. You're gonna see that's gonna go in there nice and easy. We're gonna push in the white wire. So uh, if you, if I would have stripped them, or if I would have cut them just a little bit shorter, they fold in just really, really nice. So I'm a, I'm a little rusty. And then again, right here, this one right here, this is the black wire because they all have their own area to go. Okay, so I, so I just go bond, white, black. This here is our um, 
hot, right? That's gonna be our pigtail, go onto the light. And then when it comes to our switch leg, usually what I've seen uh, a lot of, you know, better journeymen do is they fold their wires, okay? So what that means is you will fold it over, okay? And then you will fold that in and you can kind of give it a little spin. And so this is gonna be your finished product that when the finishing stage comes, well, we're not gonna grab the white or the, or the bond wire, we are gonna grab our switch leg, which is right here. That's gonna go onto the switch. And then this would go onto the switch as well because that's our pigtail that we just spliced on. And you can see that um, I was able to get my wires in about that deep, which is pretty good, right? Give or take. Um, you don't wanna cram your wires in because again, they can get pinched. You can wreck the wires. Um, we just got a nice clean install here where the drywallers aren't gonna hit your wires. Spliced nice, it's all clean. This is just a single gang box, so in a sense of organization isn't as crucial. But once you start getting into like um, the two gang boxes and even in the commercial industry where we are talking more about like 12 by 12s or even like a four by four and we're piping, it's very, very nice to have your wires all go into like the corners of the boxes that kind of go together. It just makes splicing easier. It makes troubleshooting easier if you have to pull out a wire or add a wire. A lot of times you open up a box and the wires are just scattered like spaghetti. And just don't do that, okay? Hit your corners, makes it very easy. And that is how you splice a single, uh, single device box. So again, power always comes to the box. You guys can check out my video on that. It was a pro tip that I've been taught many, many years ago. Never run power to a light box always run it to a switch box and it's just gonna make your troubleshooting easier. All you have to do is take off the cover plate, take off the switch. You can easily access your wires and find your power. When you find power in troubleshooting, that's the number one secret, okay? Sometimes you gotta take down lights, you gotta take down smoke detectors, figure out where power entered into the system and it's just the worst, okay? Keep it simple. There are special scenarios where things happen, such as maybe renovations or whatever, but that is how you splice a single gang box. This one is for a switch. If it was for a plug, we would be splicing pigtails onto each one. Again, th this one is just for a switch. But again, if it was for a plug, this, um, this pigtail that we're seeing on this right here. So again, we have two hots. So power coming in is our home run, power leaving to the plug. We spliced on a pigtail. Again, this pigtail should be a little bit longer. I'm just running out of wire here. Um, but if this was for a plug, you would be doing this for each one. This way, I believe that meets code. And also, if you ever disconnect a plug, all the other plugs in that circuit are still working okay. So there we go. That is how you splice a single gang box. So if you guys wanna stay updated on this roughing in series, you guys can subscribe here on YouTube or check the description to watch the other videos in this roughing in series. If you would like to stay updated with the website, Becoming an Electrician, just go to becominganelectrician.com forward slash subscribe. You can get my free book that I've written specifically for apprentice electricians, things that I wish I knew before I got started up and became a journeyman here in Canada. And you guys can also subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss another video. I will talk to you guys in the next one.